Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. It's kind of weird that um, in this day and age, something must be wrong with the food supply for a, a young child like myself to have to have all this gray hair standing in front of you. Something's messed up. I don't know what it is. Food supply, something. Happy Children's Sabbath 2022. Glad to be here and glad you can be here. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your blessing. We thank you for being with us, for guiding us each and every day. And Lord, as we are before you now, we ask that you would be with me, Lord, that the words of my mouth be to your honor and to your glory. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Treasured by God is the theme for Children's Sabbath 2022. Um, someday soon we'll get some of you guys to create some more children, procreate some more children, so we can have a bigger brood. But we're thankful for the ones that we have, and we're thankful for God blessing them. Treasured by God is the title of the sermon. As a, as a young boy, as many of you know, I grew up in an island, and we... Played a lot outside, lived on a dirt road, and kind of uncivilized society. But even then, there was a lot of things that I treasured. How many of you know what marbles are? You know what marbles? You played marbles? Of course. That was one of my most favorite things to do. The way we played it is you had to come with some marbles and the other people came with their marbles and we played the game how we played it and if you won you got all the marbles so I had socks full of marbles I was just that good but the thing with marbles is as you you might know they come in all different colors sizes beautiful ones right and so I treasured my marbles. I protected my marbles. My marbles were special to me. As I grew older, I don't know what happened to the marbles. They're somewhere. They're still somewhere down in here. I treasure them. But I don't have those socks of marbles anymore. I maybe gave them some, some away. I don't know. But as I grew older, I got different treasures. I know one of the treasures was my first new car that I purchased, 1994 Honda Accord EX. That means it had the nice rims. It was nice and black, sporty looking. I treasured that car. Wiped the, you know, the dust off. I had to give up that car probably a little over a year afterwards because my first child was about to come and my wife says we need a house we need to be able to make payments on a house so I had to give up the car and get another Honda Accord not a EX it had a stick shift which I didn't know how to drive <laughs> but that was one of the things I treasured I mentioned my wife um, I treasured her as a as a my girlfriend. So there are things that you treasure in life, and I'm sure many of you guys have treasures that you hold. You held there or maybe still hold there. And I remember as a young father, some of the things that I treasured that maybe didn't even come into my mind, but when the moments happen, you you see how much of a treasure they were. I could recall the first time of my first son as I was lounging on the chair and I think I was watching TV or something. And he was months old. And I saw out of the corner of my eye as he got up and he took his first step. I jumped. I said I was lounging. I jumped off the chair. And it was such a, a feeling of... I don't know, joy and 
something that was overwhelming inside of me when that happened. I can't explain it, but it was there. And just to see that first moment was something that I treasure and I hold dear. Whenever each one of my children took their first steps, I could hear the laughs that they have when they enjoy a, a joke. When Josiah tells a bad joke. <laughs> I treasure the accomplishments when they do something for the first time. And even you treasure the joys and the sorrows that they face. You treasure family members, even the ones that you lost. You all know what a geode is? Well, you guys are smart. I just learned about it. You found some? Oh, not that kind of geode. <laughs> geode. <laughs> geode. It's a little rock. They're mostly spheres, yeah. Um, on the outside, it looks like nothing. But when you break it on the inside, what do you see, Janet? Crystals. Oh, you have some too, right? Beautiful. I was about to say, your daughter probably has a bunch of those. Yeah. But they're spherical rocks that contain hollow cavities lined with beautiful crystals. The name geode comes from the Greek word geo geoides, which means earth-like. These unique rocks can be formed in a variety of ways. They seem ordinary on the outside, but on the inside, they're beautiful and they're valuable. This is similar to what the writer meant and what Josiah hinted at in his children's story when he talked about earthen vessels that hold treasure. Though we may look ordinary on the outside, though we might look at our young children and see not much, on the inside is much value. No matter what we go through or the circumstances we have, we carry something with us that cannot be destroyed. We might be afflicted, but not crushed. We might be perplexed, but we won't despair. We might be struck down, when we, but we won't be destroyed. Because within us, we carry the most beautiful treasure, Christ. Jesus took the penalty for our sins. He died on the cross for us. He rose again, and he is coming again to take us home. Amen. Like the appearance, the outer appearance of a geode, we might not see much, with, again, like I said, with our young people. But they're not ordinary vessels. They're special vessels. Inside of them are hidden treasures that God himself placed. It is so wonderful to have our children bless us as leaders, the presenters. There have been preachers, teachers. We thank God for all of them and especially their willingness to serve. I'm all constantly amazed when, as, as I sit here and I listen to Sam play, a, a young man that's dealt with asthma, right? I don't know many of you have tried to blow through those reeds. I could not do that. I've tried it in the past. I can't do that. But to see him stand here and play as beautifully as he played, blowing through like a, a tiny coffee straw. God is good. We thank you for we thank God for the for the for the youth. It is wonderful to have them serve as I said. The theme throughout this program is that we are treasured by God. And what important message it is to remember, especially when there are so many things that try to make us forget that God treasures us. 
There are many challenges that we face each day, but we have the reassurance in the, in the Word of God. We have His promises and the knowledge that Jesus is going to come again to take His treasures home. Amen. That is the ultimate treasure. Many others will treasure, many things that we treasure will fade. If I have an expensive car, eventually it's going to lose value. If I have money, it's going to be spent. If I have gold or silver, it might lose its value, it might lose its shine, it might get lost. But Jesus and this message of hope will do no such thing. Second Corinthians 4, the Bible tells us that we have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the extraordinary greatness of the power of God will be of God and not from ourselves. We see the story with Lucifer. We read it all the time how he was a light bearer. And he got into him, to his head and he thought that somehow he was more than he was. God made us earthen vessels. But we are no less illuminary than Lucifer was. But the light that shines through us, God says, because we are in earthen vessels, when others see that light, they have to give the glory to God. But as earthen vessels, as little geodes, you have something to offer to the world. Children are a heritage from the Lord. Turn to, turn to Psalm 127, verses 3 to 5. Psalm 127, verse 3 to 5. And it reads, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that had his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies by the gate. Children are a heritage from the Lord. Jesus has also said, in the teaching lessons that he gave to his disciples and others as they looked at the children as a nuisance. Jesus says, except you become like these little children, none of you will inherit the kingdom of God. Children are your role models. Wow. Except you become like these little children, you shall not see the kingdom of God. Furthermore, Jesus had to tell them, as sometimes we have a habit of hindering their children from coming to the Lord, hindering their growth. Jesus says, do no such thing. Do not hinder my little ones. Do not. God values children. And one of the things that's beautiful among many things that's beautiful with God. As old as I am, as old as you are, gray hairs are not. We are children of the King. We are, child, we are children of the King. And so God values and treasures not only the young children, but all children. Psalm 139, and let's read with me, Psalm 139, verses 1 through 18. A picture from the Word of God that shows you how God values you. The psalmist says, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. 
Thou knowest my downsitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. There is not a word in my tongue, but, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me before, behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I, if, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day, and the darkness and the night light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins, and thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. You need to know that as well. My substance was not hid from thee, when I was made in secret and curiously wroth in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which is in continuance were fashioned, when yet as there was none of them. Lord, how precious also are thy thoughts unto me. O oh God, how great is the sum of them. If I should even try to count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. God treasures you. Peter, in 1 Peter 2.9, as well as Exodus 19, 3 to 5, as Banachi read in the scripture, God called you a peculiar people, a treasure unto himself. He told Israel how he bared them up on eagles' will, eagles' wings, like unto to bring them out unto himself. If God did that for Israel to deliver them from bondage, how much more do you think God would do for you in the bondage and suffering that we deal with? In the scriptures, we also learn about talents. And God has given talents to each one of us. And the talents, sort of like Josiah hinted at in, the, in this children's story as well, they have to shine forth. Because that's why God gave them to us, right? Justice is going to read something here about treasure talents. And then I'll come back and finish. God made each of us by his own hand. Each of us is designed to bring God glory in a way that no one else can. He has given us good gifts and blessed us with special talents. Jesus told a story about talents in Matthew 25, 14-30. Often his stories had more than one meaning. In this story, a talent is a super large amount of money. Today, a talent might be worth a million U.S. dollars. A talent in this story can also mean our gifts and abilities. Jesus' story begins like this. A rich man decided to go on a long trip, so he called his servants and asked them to take care of his house, his belongings, and his money. The man in this story trusted his servants and believed that they would take care of his special and valuable things. The man decided to give one servant five talents of money. To another he gave two talents, and to the last he servant he gave one talent. He gave each servant an amount that was according to their ability. Our abilities are our special gifts that God gave to each of us. Some of us are good at memorizing, some of us are better at certain sports, and some of us are better at help knowing how to help others. Some can solve problems better, and some are more generous. Our ability is something special we have that's different from anyone else's. 
The story continues with the rich man leaving on his trip. While he was away, servants each did something with the money that they received. The one with five talents went right away and used his money and got five more. The one with two talents also used his money wisely and gained two more talents. But the one with one talent took his talent and buried it in the ground. After a nice long trip, the rich man came back and wanted to know what his servants did with his money. The first man with five talents said, You trusted me with five talents, and I made five more. His master smiled and replied, Great job, good and faithful servant. You are trustworthy with a few things, so I'll put you in charge of lots of things. Come celebrate with me. Then the man with the two talents came and said, You trusted me with two talents, and I made two more. His master smiled and replied, Great job, good and faithful servant. You are trustworthy with a few things, so I will put you in charge of lots of things. Come and celebrate with me. Then the man who received the one talent came and told his master, I know you work hard for your money, so I was afraid to lose any of it. I decided to bury it and keep it safe. Here's your one talent back. The rich man was not impressed and said, You lazy servant. At the very least, you could have taken the money to the bank, and you would have at least collected some interest from it. He immediately took the talent away from the man and gave it to the first man who used his money to make more. The point Jesus is making is that if you use your special gifts and abilities, then God will give you more chances to keep on using them. He will trust you with so much more and help you grow your talents. But if you choose not to put your talents to practice, you might not have the chance to use them at all. God considers you very valuable and trusts you to do something for him using your gifts and abilities. Maybe you're not sure what your special abilities are yet. Ask your grown-up what they think your gifts are. Listen and watch when others compliment you or notice something good about what you're doing. To you, it might be something small, but to God, it's a special and very valuable gift that only you can give. If you keep using it, God will continue to make it even bigger and better. Today, we have learned so many amazing lessons about our value. We learned that God made us by his own hands, read life into us, and made us in his image. We learned that God wove us together and made us wonderfully unique. And we learned that God has given each of us special talents and gifts. We are his amazing treasures. The Bible tells us that we are so treasured by God that he is going to come and to take us to, to be with him some day. Jesus made a promise in John 14, 1-3, saying, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Amen. Amen indeed. So the thing we need to remember, that when God gives talents, when God gives his treasures, God does not expect, like some of us would take it, put it in a box, and put it in a, a safe deposit box in the bank and lock it away from all eyes and all hands. But when God gives a gift, the beauty in the gift that God has given is that that gift will continue to give and bless others. So as Jesus said to the disciples, never, never, never hinder the young one from coming to him. Let them use their gifts. Let them grow their gifts. Let them exercise their talents for God because that's what God gave them for. And us older children as well, you have gifts. You have talents. God expects you to use them no matter your age. Grow your gifts. And as God gives you those gifts and as you use those gifts, what did he do in the parable, to those that use the, their gifts, they gave, he got them more. And that way others will continue to be blessed by God himself. Because all good gifts come from God. We are treasured by God. How do we know this? The Bible says, but God commended his love towards us. And that while we were yet sinners... Christ died for us. And again, behold, what manner of love 
brothers and sisters, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us. That's you, that's me, that we should be called sons of God. We are treasured by God. How do we know this? The Bible says, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. He called you friends also. Jesus also says, I am that good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for his flock. Why? Because he treasures the flock. We are treasured by God. How do we know this? John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, i.e., he emptied the treasury of heaven to send Christ down to earth that you would not perish but instead have everlasting life. We are treasured by God. How do we know this? The prophet says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. We are treasured by God, brothers and sisters. How do we know this? Because the Bible says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded, the Apostle Paul says, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature can separate you, I, from the love of God. And that love of God, Apostle Paul says, is in Christ. Jesus. I found this poem. It says, Author Unknown. The master was searching for a vessel to use. Before him were many. Which one would he choose? Take me, cried the gold one. I am shiny and bright. I am of great value. And I did things just right. My beauty and luster will outshine the rest. And for someone like you, Master, gold would be best. The Master passed on, and with no word at all, and looked at a silver urn, narrow and tall. I'll serve you, dear Master. I'll pour out your wine. I will be on your table. Whenever you dine, my lines are so grateful, my carving so true, and silver will certainly compliment you. Unheeding, the master passed on to the vessel of brass, wide-mouthed and shallow and polished like glass. Hear, hear, cried the vessel, I know I will do. Place me on your table for all men to view. Look at me, called the goblet of crystal so clear. Though fragile I am, I will serve you with fear. The master came next to the vessel of wood, polished and carved. It solidly stood. You may use me there, master, the wooden bowl said. But I'd rather you use me for fruit, not for bread. Then the master looked down on a vessel of clay. Empty and broken, it helplessly lay. No hope had the vessel that the master might choose to cleanse and to make whole, to fill and to use. Oh, this is the vessel I've been hoping to find. I'll mend it and use it and make it all mine. 
I'll need not the vessel with the pride of itself, nor one that is narrow to sit on a shelf, nor one that is big mouth and shallow and loud, nor one that displays its contents so proud. Then gently he lifted that vessel of clay. He mended it, cleansed it, and he filled it that day, spoke kindly to it, there's work you must do, just pour out to others as I pour into you. He is the potter, we are the clay, just pour out to others as he pours out into you.